So if you decided to read through just one of the Gospels, why would you choose the book of Luke as opposed to the other three? A lot of people, whenever they first start trying to read through the Gospels, they naturally start in the book of Matthew, which makes a lot of sense. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem tends to come whenever you get to the genealogies. And most people, even people who have been reading the Bible for a long time, and even people who know what to expect, tend to get pretty stuck in the genealogies and either just skip it all together or just kind of quit reading because they get so bogged down um, inside of that. And the reason is that in the 21st century church, we kind of have a problem. And that problem is that we assume that everything in scripture was written for us. Now, don't get me wrong, it, it is written for us. All of scripture is, is written for everybody who has ever read it and never will read it. But the problem comes whenever we fail to realize that God wrote the Bible through human authors. And so those human authors had specific reasons for writing those books and specific audiences that they were writing to. So whenever you look at the book of Matthew, it's specifically written to a first century Jewish audience. Now, the reason that that comes into play is that you and I aren't first century Jews. And so the problem comes there with regards to the genealogies. It's easy to get bogged down when you don't understand the purpose of the genealogies and when you don't come from uh, a background where that's a really, really important thing. The cool thing is, though, that the books of Mark and Luke are specifically written to Gentile audiences, which is most likely what you and I are, again, unless um, you are of full Jewish descendants um, and also religiously a Jew. Um, but for most of us, we are, we're Gentiles, and so the books of Mark and Luke are specifically written to people like you and me who don't come from that Jewish background. So whenever you're reading through uh, the Gospels, why would you choose Luke over Mark, though, even knowing that, uh, that Mark and Luke are both written towards Gentile audiences? Um, well, the thing is, I mean, you should read Mark. Mark is one of the most beautiful accounts I mean, there's only four, but it is definitely one of the most beautiful accounts of, of Jesus' life and his death. And, and I mean, it's, it's an awesome book, and it's one of my favorite books in all of the New Testament to read. And so I would definitely encourage you, if you're going to read through uh, a, a gospel, Mark is, is an absolutely great one to choose. But for the purposes of this Bible study, we're going to be looking at the book of Luke. And the reason is that Luke isn't just written for Gentiles. But specifically, Luke is written for Gentiles who are either new converts to Christianity or possibly even aren't converts at all, but are, are kind of wondering and kind of looking at Christianity and, and thinking, you know, is this something that I really want to give my life to? And so the cool thing about that is that as you're reading through the book of Luke, if, if you can manage to, to read it with fresh eyes, with um, with eyes of, of someone who's never heard these stories before, or if they have heard them, uh, have never had them confirmed, you can, you can really rediscover the man that, that Jesus was and is uh, through this awesome gospel. And, and so it's a really cool study to try to look at, again, with fresh eyes and with eyes of, of someone who hasn't read the Bible before. Now, one last super cool fact about the book of Luke before I end this video is that Luke actually wrote both the books of Luke and Acts. And so as you're reading through the New Testament, whenever you get through the Gospels and you get into Acts, um, Acts just flows so beautifully uh, from Luke. And so it's a, it's a really cool read if you start in Luke and read all the way through the life of Jesus and then go into the book of Acts and read all the way through Acts and see um, the stories about the, the church beginning and everything. It's a really, really cool study. Um, just as a quick example of that, I just want to read the first uh, or the last few verses of the book of Luke and the first few verses in the book of Acts. Luke chapter 24, verses 50 through 53. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. 
Then they all worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. So obviously Luke ends with Jesus ascending back into heaven, but watch what happens at the very beginning of the book of Acts. The first few verses are kind of an introduction, but then in verse 6, Luke says, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And so, as you can see, the two books end and begin perfectly, almost at the exact same spot. And so you can read this seamless story of Jesus and of the beginning of the church. But for the purposes of this devotional and of something that we can apply to our lives right now, uh, I just want to look again at verses 7 and 8, uh, where Jesus says to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And oftentimes today, we look at passages like this and we kind of just apply it to the apostles. Ironically, even though we want to apply everything in the Bible to us, whenever things get, get kind of focused and things get a little bit tough, we tend to want to just assign it to, well, that was just Jesus talking to them. But it's not. You and I have received the gift of the Holy Spirit if, if we're all Christians. And so that means that the Holy Spirit is leading us to share the gospel with the people around us, be that like the passage says in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, or also like it says to the ends of the earth. And so each of us, if we're Christians, have a calling to go and to spread the gospel wherever we are um, and wherever we may find ourselves at any point in time. And so as uh, you go out today and you're doing whatever you may be doing, remember that it's part of your job as a Christian to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around you. I hope that this has blessed you, and I hope that you have an awesome day, and I hope that you'll get out there and that you'll go do good. Thanks for watching.